Samsung's new mid-range phone is now out and it's the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. The model I have here has six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, but you can get the high-end one with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. So the good things about this phone that really it does have going for it are the flat screen on this, which is a Super AMOLED 120 Hertz screen, 6.5 inches, and it's all powered by the Exynos 1280, this chip. And it does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which can charge at the maximum of 25 watts. The charger, of course, isn't in the box anymore, and you don't even get a TPU case or even a screen protector on this phone. So camera wise, the main camera is 64 megapixels. It has optical image stabilization. We do have a 12 megapixel ultra wide and then two five megapixel cameras. The selfie camera is 32 megapixels. And in this hands-on unboxing video, my first impressions basically, I will give you some camera samples from this and my overall experience in so far using the A53 5G. So our phone here, 6.5 inches, full HD, 120 hertz, super AMOLED screen. We've got Gorilla Glass 5, and I love the fact that, yes, it's a flat screen. So no curvature to the edges where the colors tend to shift out. Not happening here. Bezels top and bottom look a little large, and the sides as well. It's not that bad, but I do wish it was a little slimmer. So the in-screen fingerprint reader, I'll just demonstrate that now. It's quick, and it unlocks can see in about well under a second i have noticed if you haven't used the phone for a few hours it can sometimes be slow and then have a little tiny bit of lag after when you unlock it now the front facing camera here you see it does have that silver ring around it i'm not actually a huge fan of this it just makes it stand out a little more obviously that's something that samsung does want with their phones so we have a plastic frame around the outside the back of it this is plastic too and i like this Blue color, I've had it before with the previous model. And your camera setup is five cameras, sorry, four cameras here and then the flash. And we've got a 64 megapixel main camera with optical image stabilization, 12 megapixel pixel ultra wide, five megapixel macro and five megapixels for depth and an LED flash there. So this material doesn't pick up fingerprints. It feels okay, but yes, it's all plastics and it doesn't feel as premium as their flagships. And that's exactly what Samsung wants, of course. Down the bottom, we have our SIM tray tool. It will take two nano SIMs or a micro SD card. So great to have micro SD card support, but there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Downwards firing loudspeaker, Type-C port does not support video out. It's USB two speeds. And up the top here, we just simply have a microphone. Yes, I still have the plastics on the outside of this because I'm waiting for my case. So that's why I've left it on for now so I don't scratch it up. Now the screen by far is the best thing about this phone. For me that is 120 hertz, super AMOLED screen, AMOLED being just great deep blacks, contrasty punchy colors, and excellent uniformed colors. They don't shift out and being a flat screen, it's not gonna shift out at the edges or anything like that either too as well. So just using display tester here to take a look at a couple of the colors. You see what I mean that the darks here too are just pure black and that's the great thing about it that no phones really, at least mid-range phones should actually be using IPS. It's AMOLED all the way for me. I'm pretty sure most people would agree with me on that too. So even though it's stating green colors, that's all black colors there, and it's all looking good. So the touch is working fine, and 120 hertz, of course, is the main option, and that is by default. And I'll just get out of this. You can see then a bit of that animation lag that I was talking about, the stutter, and then swiping down here too. So to show you the options we do get. So adaptive brightness, I've got that off at the moment. Is it working fine? I think at times it's, a little too dim at other times, a little too bright. It needs a bit of tweaking there. So we have eye shield on, darkness mode. You can adjust the color, white balance. All of that stuff is in there. High motion, 120 hertz. But they don't give us the 90 hertz option that I do see with some other brands, which is very handy to have. Now, does it have a pre-applied screen protector? It doesn't. So they don't include a case, screen protector, or charger. That's because Samsung wants you to buy all of those extras. They make a lot more money out of that. But overall, it is a fantastic screen and the best, really, feature of this mid-range phone.
is that screen. I've only had this phone now for two days. This is day number two with it, so it's all just first impressions here. The UI performance, what is it like with the Exynos 1280? I have noticed that sometimes the notifications can be a little bit laggy, okay? Uh, I've seen this already on the S22 Ultra, and I've talked a bit about that in some previous videos. The optimization of One UI 4.1 and Android 12, I don't think so great yet, especially with these Exynos chipsets from Samsung. It is... And then the UI here, set at 120 hertz, it is fast, it is smooth. It's just that you will get these lags now and then. I've noticed that applications like Twitter can be quite choppy and laggy, the scrolling, when it's loading things in. And once they even load it, it's a bit janky at times. It, it really could be optimized a bit better there. And it's just what it is at the moment. I do believe they're going to come through with an update. So it does run Android 12. And if you look at the software here that the updates... We are on the latest firmware. There has, in fact, been no firmware updates yet for this particular model, but I do believe that Samsung will be pushing some out soon, especially some just minor bug fixes. The camera is where I do see a bit of lag sometimes. Shutter lag is noticeable, and it just seems at times when you swap through, you have something else running in the background, like even just Twitter open, and then you decide that you want to quickly take a photo or something, it can be a little bit choppy there with that. Going through the different modes here, you'll see that with video, if I do jump into the settings, this is 4K enabled at the moment, uh, you'll see that video stabilization can't be enabled. That's electronic image stabilization. The 64 megapixel main camera, however, has optical. So you get some form of stability there, which is good. But if you do want electronic image stabilization, you must go over then to 1080p. It's the same for the front facing camera. You do have their ultra steady mode, but it puts it into 1080p for that. And going through this can sometimes again be just a bit laggy. And you see then the animation did a bit of a lag. And for the Antutu score that this gets, as you'll see now, just over 400,000, it shouldn't really be displaying and showing these animation lags. It's something they need to sort out. And my S22 Ultra has the same exact problem. So the storage speeds on this, I do believe it's UFS 2 spec we have. Although I haven't been able to confirm that anywhere, but it looks like it to me with these speeds here. So it's UFS 2.0. 1 or 2.2 spec and the random reads and writes aren't actually bad at all. The sequentials are, yes, of course, slower than UFS 3.1, but it's still very good. Now, the charge time, unfortunately, I don't have an exact time. It's triggering out on here, but it takes just over two hours to fully charge the 5,000 milliamp hour battery at 25 watts. So it doesn't support 45 watts. It's only 25. And we have other phones that I commonly review, especially from Xiaomi, that charge a lot quicker. And I've got one cut up and coming that charges actually at 120 watts uh, for around a similar price tag. In fact, cheaper than this, which is good. Oh, that was just something I pointed out. Is that the audio bit rate with the video files is reasonably good. So 256 kilobits per second. And most other manufacturers use 128 or even 96. So that's one good area with Samsung. The microphones and audio quality have been good. I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. So I did a stress test and great to see that it doesn't throttle at all. Only 0.5%, so 0.5% throttling down in the performance. The score quite low, mid-range though. It's not bad. This is the extreme test here, which should get it really hot and it just gets kind of warm. It's nothing at all. Even when gaming, it just gets warm. So great there with the thermal throttling. It does have a pass here with safety net status, which is good. And we do have a widevine level one cert with this particular model here as well. And camera two API, unfortunately, is limited. Okay. We really want to have full support here or level three for things like open camera and then Gcam ports. If you were going to be using them on this phone, well, um, you might run into a few problems there. So hopefully that later will change there. Loudspeakers on this model are surprisingly good. I think the volume's definitely there with these ones. And of course you don't have 3.5 millimeter, which is bad. Okay, I really wish we still had the analog. Audio out would be great, but it's gone. I think it's just gone completely, at least with their mid-range. Here with uh, Samsung, it's gone. Okay, other brands do have it, but we don't here. So earpieces up the top also doubles as a loudspeaker. Call quality with this phone is fine. It does have active noise cancelling for the microphone, so it tries to remove some of the background noise when you're placing calls. Good, and it gets a thumbs up from me. Microphone quality, I've called myself and listened to it. I think it's 
fine. It's good. No problems there at all. And there's a downwards firing light loudspeaker here. So I'm going to play a sample now track from one of my videos at 100% volume where you can hear that there is a tiny hint of bass and the volume overall is good. And I like these loudspeakers. Over to gaming now with Pump G. So this title here, you can only set just the high frame rate. Unfortunately, that's all it allows us. Even on smooth, that's it, which is a little bit disappointing. Hopefully that can change later that these developers allow this chipset to be able to run the higher frame rate options, which I do think that can handle. But let's jump into now a little bit of gameplay. And it runs just fine this game and it barely gets warm too I've noticed because really it's capped at 30 frames per second so it's not even pushing this Exynos 1280 at all. Octa core and whoa someone's trying to kill me already. See if I can get there. No they just run around the corner there. But this performance is looking good. And yeah you can get those kills as you can see even though I really do hope that the developer of this game can allow us to at least run 45 frames per second, or even 60 would be perfect, of course, which I do think the chipset can do. Over to our cameras now. So the weather here is still terrible. It's been about three weeks of rain, which is so unusual. But we do have 4K 30 frames per second with this front-facing camera. However, with the 4K option, it does not seem to have any electronic image stabilization. You see, as I just move around here a little bit, you get some shakiness come through to it. But if you use 1080p, it seems to be then using the electronic image stabilization, and that's great. Now, audio bitrate is 256 kilobits per second, which is really good. I mean, this is better than some flagship phones, and having that 4K option is excellent on a mid-range phone. Main camera here now with optical image stabilization, and the focus on it is pretty good. I don't really seem to be having too many issues. What I've noticed though is the camera app can have a bit of lag to it. Sometimes when you take a photo, when you touch it, it will then go to almost record like a burst shot even though I just tapped it for one second. So that's one thing that needs to be addressed is the lag that we're seeing in the camera application here. So this 4K quality I don't think is too bad considering, well, the weather is really awful here at the moment. It is wet and raining as you can see. And on the go to the ultra wide camera which is really good. We're able to do this. The quality nowhere near as good as that main sensor, as you can see here with my preview of our camera. So far now in my time using this, the battery life has been excellent. I don't have exact battery stats yet because it's only two days. I've been benchmarking, downloading, gaming, and just using it a little bit more than I probably would with some of that use there. However, I can see that it should be able to go for about eight hours of on-screen time and make it definitely through a full day here. So the charge time at 25 watts for me is over two hours and it doesn't seem to be particularly fast. We don't get a charger in the box. We don't even have a screen protector already applied on it like other brands do. And there is no TPU case included in the box. That's why it's so thin. And Samsung, of course, wants you to buy all those extras so they can make even more money out of a phone like this. And that's where I get onto one of two cons for me is the price of this. So I paid, I think it was off the top of my head, 489 euros from samsung.com to get this six and 128 gigabyte 
model here. So it's a bit pricey really for the spec of the phone, I believe, and the performance you're getting. That's where I get onto the second con, is the performance, that I notice that the UI can sometimes be a little bit laggy, and there's a few stutters here and there with the animations. The camera app can be quite laggy at times too, which is a bit disappointing. So clearly to me, Samsung's got a bit of work to do with the software to improve things. And that in general has been my experience with Android 12 phones, that most of them are buggy, there's always something going on there. And One UI 4.1 so far has kind of been like that, a little bit disappointing. But it has the potential to be a very good phone once they iron out the bugs. I think the hardware is definitely there. It's all about that great screen on here. Build quality is good for what it is. And I actually do like this phone. I think it's great. Just bring that price down a little bit, Samsung. So thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll probably have some follow-up follow videos with the A53 5G, if there, of course, is interest.